Good morning, everybody, and Varsha, congratulations for organizing this Youth and Climate Change meeting in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. I think you are a very good example of what young, young women lead today. And as many times you've discussed that young people's leadership has been procrastinated and has always been put for tomorrow. So right at the beginning, I want to really talk about young people as leaders of today in the climate change discussion. We will be soon looking at Paris, the COP21. The question is that are young people really participating in the process? I think young people's ad hoc and conference to conference participation in the processes have to be changed into something which is more permanent. So one clear recommendation that is to is create a permanency in the climate change negotiation so that young women and young men who are most marginalized can bring their point of view but also offer their partnership in the process of implementation of climate change discussion and action points. This very clearly comes through the World We Want 2015 data uh, engagement platform and the recent My World 2015 survey that was conducted to the SG's uh, post-2015 agenda. Young people have been prioritizing issues of climate change and environment issues for many decades. But now we can see what they're saying. So about 7.5 million people have participated and 5.2 million are young people from different backgrounds. Young people prioritize water and sanitation issues, environmental issues, issues directly engaging on climate issues into the priorities. And young people want to see a very clear answer and hold world leaders accountable for ensuring that climate issues are addressed today, not tomorrow. I think we also need to under understand the young people's agenda through a gender lens. We need to see how girls were forced into leaving schools because they have to go and fetch water or they need to take care of daily chores in their rural communities. Young women who have to balance in many ways looking at their reproductive health responsibilities, their domestic chores but also their farming responsibilities. Young women are, are going far and far because they want to fetch water. We have seen very clearly on their way to schools, on their way to, what, to fetching water, they get abducted or they also face many forms of gender-based violence. The gender discussion and climate change are absolutely intertwined. You've seen from many, many parts of the world, whether it's Latin America, Africa, or Southeast Asia where you are, that we need to work and empower young women and girls so that they can be in the center of the climate change discussions. We also have a very interesting opportunity because this year we have the ending of the Millennium Development Goals. We have very clearly an important date coming in September where the world will adopt the new Sustainable Development Goals. At the same time, we have COP21. The important discussions are these interconnected. Are young people in the center of this entire discussion? And that is what this meeting should really aim at. And the four giveaways I really want to talk about is, given the opportunity of sustainable development goals, we need to see how we work with young people so they become effective communicators and amplify what the 17 goals are, including the goals related to climate change discussions. For me, all 17 goals are directly or indirectly related to climate change discussions. Second is really how young people can be part of implementation, how we can strengthen youth-led organizations, youth-led movements such as the one Russia and many other colleagues have been leading. So they become important allies in the implementation of sustainable development goals. At the same time, they also are empowered through using offline and online technologies to monitor how these goals are being implemented and thereby really putting together an accountability framework. So young people through their active citizens platforms at local, national, regional, and global levels can be really look at accountability of sustainable development goals and how those are clearly linked to the climate change agenda. Of course, this is a great opportunity, but I really hope this conference, as it, it has done before, really yields a very clear call for investing in young people as individuals as also through their youth-led organizations. So congratulations to all of you for taking part in this important meeting and congratulations to Varsha and your team who worked very hard to pull this discussion on youth and climate change. And it's an honor to be speaking here. I regret not being there, but I know that many people like you are already taking many of these issues forward. So congratulations. Thank you.